So we're going to be looking at solutions prep and dilutions in this lecture. So let's go ahead and let's first look at the preparation of solutions. So the preparation of solutions are going to be carried out um, using various instruments. Um, so uh, the most commonly used in general chemistry are going to be the beaker and the graduated cylinder. Um, the beaker and the graduated cylinder are going to be utilized to um, house the solution and the solvent. Okay, so basically what's going to end up happening is uh, typically your solvent is going to be measured out in um, the graduated cylinder and you're typically going to add your solute to the beaker. Now of course you want to have a beaker that is large enough to hold the total volume of your solution. Okay, so you would do your calculations for your say your molarity, um, you would add your solute to the uh, beaker and then subsequently add your solvent into the uh, beaker and, store, and stir the uh, solution so that every can, everything can dissolve. Um, another approach to preparation of solution is going to be the utilization of something known as a volumetric flask. Okay, so this is a volumetric flask. The nice thing about the volumetric flask is that the total volume of the solution has already been calibrated for the container. Um, so there's always a mark on the graduated, or excuse me, on the volumetric flask that will indicate the point at which you have reached 500 or 200 or 100 mils um, of solution volume. Okay, so um, with this type of uh, equipment, what you'll do is you will add your solute to the container. Okay, and then you will add, you know, a, a small quantity of your solvent. Um, you will swirl your solution and basically try to get as much of it to dissolve as possible. Um, and basically, slowly but surely, continue to add more and more solvent um, while swirling. And once you get all of your solute to dissolve, you then um, fill the volumetric flask all the way up to um, the... Uh, volumetric uh, measurement line. And of course, you're going to look at the bottom of the meniscus on top of that line um, to determine uh, the appropriate filling um, volume. Okay, so these are the two uh, setups that are typically used for solvent, or excuse me, solution preparation. Um, and you just want to make sure you're familiar with these uh, pieces of equipment because you'll be utilizing um, some of them uh, in future labs. So we're going to go ahead and look at a couple of specific situations in which we're being asked to create solutions. Um, so in this situation, they're asking me um, to create a 1.54 molal sodium chloride solution in a total of um, 0.5 kilograms of water. Um, and in this situation over here, they're asking us to create a 500 milliliter solution of 1.54 molar NaCl. So notice molality and molarity are being um, utilized to express the, express the concentration that they um, are desiring. So we need to, of course, take a few steps in order to get the quantities of our solute and solvent um, and subsequently select the correct uh, apparatus to use to create our solution. So let's go ahead and let's pay attention first to our 1.54 uh, molal solution. So what we see here. Okay, so in this case, guys, they've told us the molality of our solution is 1.54 molal. And we know that that means we have 1.54 moles of our solute, which is NaCl, for every one kilogram of our solvent. And our solvent in this case is going to be water. Okay, so we'll say kilograms of H2O. All right, so in this situation, guys, um, we know that for one kilogram, we're going to have 1.54 moles of NaCl. But in this case, they've asked us to create eight, a solution that um, utilizes a half a kilogram of water. Okay, so in this situation, guys, I need to find out how many moles of NaCl are going to need to be dissolved into this solution to keep that concentration consistent with the smaller volume or smaller uh, kilogram of solution um, quantity. Okay, so what we're going to do in that case is we are going to multiply our molality value by the number of kilograms of water that they want us to use. Okay, so if we go ahead and do this multiplication, the 1.54 um, times 0.5 gives us 0.77 moles of, so 
sorry, 770 moles of NaCl. So now I know my quantity of sodium chloride that I um, am going to need with respect to moles. Now, um, we don't measure out moles using scales or things of that sort, so we'll obviously want to convert this into grams. Okay, and we'll just do that using molar mass, and what we end up getting is um, 45.0 grams of sodium chloride. So this is the mass of the solute that we are going to be adding to our container. Okay, and of course, we're going to be adding our mass of our water. Now, um, we know that the density of water is one gram per uh, one milliliter, uh, so obviously we could use volume, a volumetric approach here. Um, we could also use the scale to measure out the mass as long as our scale um, supports that uh, mass measurement. Not all will, um, so obviously it depends on the equipment that you've been provided. So anyway, what we'll be doing here is we're going to be taking uh, 45 grams of sodium chloride and 500 kilograms of water. 500 kilograms of water is the same as 500 grams, and since the density of water is 1 gram per milliliter, we know that 500 grams of water is the same as 500 mils. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to take our 45 um, grams of sodium chloride, we're going to put it into a beaker, um, and then we're going to uh, measure out our uh, 500 milliliters of water utilizing our graduated cylinder, and we're going to place it into um, the beaker and mix and basically create our solution um, of our 1.54 molar molal NaCl um, right here in this approach. Okay, now guys. The second approach that we can take, we could use just as easily um, this same uh, apparatus. Okay, so I could take my 45 grams of sodium chloride um, and add it to the bottom of my volumetric flask and then fill up um, incrementally with swirling um, until I have a 500 milliliter volume. Now, obviously this works very nicely. This uh, approach works very nicely if we need exactly 500 mils. Okay, but if we need something more in between, like if we needed, you know, 27 mils or if we needed, you know, 120 mils, uh, the graduated cylinder approach might be better. Okay, um, now if we look at this same approach and we look at um, our molal or sorry, our molar solution, 1.54 molar solution, if you go ahead and figure out um, how many uh, moles of the NaCl you need, the calculation that you would do um, for this one would end up being the same as uh, the one we see here above. The only difference is that instead of dealing with kilograms and kilograms, we would be dealing with um, liters and liters. Okay, so that would give you the same quantity of moles of sodium chloride and obviously the same quantity of grams. Now, um, we could take uh, this solution and create it in the same way um, as we are creating, um, or uh, the same ways that we created uh, the 1.54 molal solution of NaCl. So basically, guys, um, the approach that you can take varies. It just depends on what they're asking you for. Okay, typically when we're dealing with volumetric flasks, we're dealing with, you know, whole number multiples, usually of 10 or 100. Okay, so you're not going to find like a 23 milliliter volumetric flask. Um, in that case, you will want to be using the graduated cylinder approach um, to create your solutions. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at dilutions. Um, basically, uh, a dilution is the preparing of a solution by adding water to a more concentrated um, solution. Okay, and you guys may have done this before when you're maybe making, um, let's say, uh, uh, the orange juice that comes in the little frozen cans. Um, you, you take that apart, you put the concentrate in the bottom of the pitcher um, and then you add water until the appropriate volume is reached and you subsequently get a um, dilute solution that obviously tastes like delicious orange juice. Okay, um, in the dilution process you need to understand that the total number of moles remain the same. Okay, so if I take a more concentrated solution and add water to it, the number of moles of solute that I have dissolved are going to remain the same. It's a constant value. The only thing that has changed is the amount of solvent um, that you have added. Okay, and when we're doing dilution calculations, we're going to use the equation um, M1V1 equals M2V2. So M um, is the molarity, okay, molarity of your um, uh, solution, okay, volume or V1 is volume of that solution. M2 is the second molarity, so maybe the molarity of the solution you want to solve for. Okay, and V2 is once again the volume um, of this other new solution. Okay, so over here, guys, we're going to have our 
molarity and our volume of our concentrated solution. Over here, we're going to utilize um, or have the molarity and volume of our dilute solution. Okay, now these can be flip-flopped. Just make sure that you're consistent. Whatever side you're plugging in your information for your concentrated solution, make sure the opposite side is the um, being plugged in with the values of the dilute solution. So this question asks us what volume of 15.8 molar nitric acid is required to make 250 mils of a 6.0 molar solution. Okay, so let's first break this down into its component pieces. Okay, so first of all, guys, we know we're going to be using um, M1, M1, V1 equals M2, V2. Okay, so if M1 is equal to 15.8 molar, okay, V1 equals my question mark because that's the volume I want to know. They're asking me what volume of my concentrated solution do I need in order to make M2, which equals 6.0 molar, okay, um, and the volume of that solution that they're wanting us to make is 250 mils. Okay, so we know our M1, our M2, and our V2. The only thing we don't know is our V1. Okay, so in this situation, guys, we're solving for V1. So if we go ahead and manipulate that, M2, V2 over M1, this is going to be our V1 value. Okay, now, before we plug anything in, we want to make sure that all our units are acceptable. Okay, um, I want to suggest, guys, that you always convert your volume into liters. Um, it's not always necessary, um, but there are times when it is necessary. So in my book, it's better just to go with the... Um, point or go with the value that will lead to less errors and less require less thinking. So in this case, I'm going to take my 250 milliliters and turn it into liters, so 0 0.50 um, liters. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and plug my numbers into my equation. Okay, so M2 is equal to 6.0 molar, okay, times uh, V2, which is 0 0.25 liters, okay, all divided by my M1, which is 15.8 molar, okay? Molarity and molarity is going to cancel. Um, volume is going to be left over. And that's going to give you 0 0.949 liters, okay? Um, and if we put this into milliliters and with appropriate sig figs, we end up with 95 mils. Okay, now remember, guys, V1 is the volume of the concentrated solution that I need in order to make the solution. Okay, so basically, guys, that 95 mils is how much of the concentrated solution I'm going to take and then add in more water to basically dilute that down and give me the dilute concentration, which is 6.0 molar, uh, molar. Okay, so um, when you're approaching these problems, as I said, guys, make sure that you are matching up the units um, with the appropriate variables. Okay, so make sure you're consistent. I usually start out with M1 and V1 being the more concentrated solutions, okay, so the information about the concentrated solution, the volume of the concentrated solution, and I usually use M2 and V2 um, for the dilute, okay? Now, if you choose not to do that, um, that's okay. Just make sure that you're being consistent with which side you choose. So let's go ahead and look at how we would actually carry out this dilution process um, from the previous problem that we looked at, okay? So we just di dictated or indicated that... Um, we are going to need 95 milliliters um, of our 15.8 molar HNO3 solution. Okay, now those 95 mils are going to be added to a volumetric flask or, or um, using the beaker and uh, graduated cylinder flask um, that will allow us to dilute this process. Now, what I want you guys to pay attention to is that the volume of the um, concentrated HNO3 is going to be added to either the beaker or the volumetric flask. Okay, so we have our beaker here. Okay, so you're gonna add those in. But what you have to consider is that the total volume of your solution has to be 250 mils. So the reality of it is, is that you're not going to be adding 250 mils of water, you're gonna be adding water until you reach 250 mils. Okay, so I already have 95 mils of volume. So if I take uh, 250 and subtract 95 mils from it, the reality of it is I'm gonna be adding a, about 155 milliliters of water. Okay, so remember that your molarity equals moles over volume of solution, okay, solution, 
right? And so that's the total volume of everything included. In this case, we're dealing with something that is in the liquid form. It's already in solution form. So when we add it into the container, it's going to take up volume. Okay. Now, the last thing I want to point out, guys, is when we're dealing with acids and bases, which I'll point out again, um, you want to always add your um, acid to the water. Okay, Never add water to acid, um, and we'll discuss those safety concerns later. But just for now, do as you oughta, add acid to water.